Welcome to this week's episode of Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Vigenhill. This past week, the sixth annual Fair Trade Volleyball Tournament was held in the Dixon Center. Let's take a closer look. My name is Orlin Jesperson. I'm the Assistant Director for Recreation and Athletics here at Cabrini. Um, I oversee all the intramural sports and club sports and just the general like recreational activities here in the building. This tournament with the business department for the past six years and uh, it benefits uh, or brings awareness to fair trade issues and just gets everyone out to have a good time um, and just play for fun. So uh, we've had 16 teams every year since we've started it so and that's pretty much how many we can handle um, and everyone has a really good time. Here for the play fair, trade fair, volleyball tournament, you know, me and my team's dominating. That's really it. It's gonna be a blast, so we'll have fun. Halloween is just around the corner. This Saturday in Philadelphia, there will be a 5K Halloween hustle to help battle lung cancer. Get into your costume before the race because prizes will be given to the most creative costumes. There will also be various treats. It's a great way for students on campus to get out with friends and walk for a good cause. Student registration is $15. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. Interested in a spooky, scary night on the town? Eastern State Penitentiary in Philly is the site for terror behind the walls, a haunted house of horror with six different attractions throughout the former prison. The cheapest way to purchase tickets will be through the prison's website, easternstate.org, or you can buy your tickets at the box office for $40. Looking for something to do that is outside the box? Head down to the Penn Museum in Philadelphia where family and friends can enjoy a documentary called Eye for India. Part of the Second Sunday Culture film series, the documentary focuses on family relationships from across the continents. If this sparks your interest, mark your calendar for October 14th. Prices are free with museum admission or $8 with a student ID. Location finally have a chance to spend a night at Painting with a Twist on Lancaster Avenue. Let's take a closer look. Our main objective is to have fun. You know, we focus on you know, drinking wine, listening to music, and, and painting. And you know, we're not a serious art studio. Uh, we just want everybody to come in, make it feel like a party, and, and have a good time. Well, if you're, they're looking for a different night out, you know, if you get tired of the same old you know, party, same old going to dinner and a movie, you know, this is a, a different night out. That, that you know, it's a way to be creative that a lot of people don't, don't have the opportunity to do. It's not a place here to be really critical. We're not fine artists here. It's just fun. You know, you come here, you have a drink, and you paint. Working at Painting with a Twist is awesome. Um, I have a lot of fun meeting new people here. Um, it really gives people a chance to not be so sheltered and say, oh, like, I'm so afraid of art, and um, you know, I'm so afraid to come out and do this. And it gives us a chance to kind of um, mingle with people and show them that art really isn't hard. It's just fun. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're a little nervous coming in, uh, maybe you haven't painted before, it, it might help loosen you up a little bit, but uh, it's just part of the party atmosphere. Uh, you bring a glass of wine, you paint, and then you just have a good time. On our website, uh, Painting with a Twist, we have a catalog, a library, a collection of over 2,000 images that you can choose from. Um, we usually kind of, depending on the season, um, depending on um, I guess what a private party books for. You can choose your own. Um, you can choose your own painting if you book a private party. Um, we do seasonal stuff for fall and Halloween and Christmas. Um, we have tons and tons classic Van Gogh paintings, and so um, definitely we encourage everyone to take a look at our website and see what we have on there. We have open classes Wednesday through Saturday night usually, and the Sunday afternoon class we call Sunday Fun Day. Um, and anybody can sign up for those classes. We also do private parties seven days a week. Everyone should come here and participate because it's super fun and it's great and you get to meet new people. You get to meet us, you get to have fun, and you get to paint. You get to leave with something that you made. It's completely original. We'd love to see more Cabrini students come and paint with us. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to Rob for this week's sports update. In Cabrini sports, the men's soccer team suffered a dramatic 2-1 overtime loss to the Rosemont College Ravens on Monday. Senior Anthony Girolamo recorded the lone goal for the Cavs. 
The men's tennis team was swept at the hands of Arcadia University on Monday with their record falling to 0-3 on the young season. They will close out the fall portion of their schedule Wednesday versus Alvernia University. Come back strong in the springtime, boys. For the second time in less than a week, the women's tennis team's match against Bryn Mawr College was canceled due to a wet playing surface. I'm not quite sure how that happens, but it's tennis. Field hockey beat Cedar Crest College 7-3 on Tuesday with senior Lindsay Atzert and freshman Carrie Ann Farrell scoring hat-tricks. Hats off to you, ladies. Women's soccer lost 1-0 to Newman University on Tuesday. The Lady Cavs put up a strong defensive battle, but were unable to answer a Newman goal in the 88th minute. Volleyball's 11-match win streak came to an end on Tuesday against Newman in a match that came down to the fifth set. Don't worry, I thought the streak was going to last forever, too. They will look to start a new streak Thursday at Gwynedd Mercy College. In Philly sports, the Eagles lost the Battle of Pennsylvania to the Pittsburgh Steelers 16-14 on Sunday after kicker Sean Sweezen recorded a 34-year-old field goal as time expired. The Eagles will return home this Sunday to take on Calvin Megatron Johnson and the Detroit Lions at 1 p.m. The Sixers held an open practice this past Saturday on the campus of St. Joe's University, giving many fans their first look at the 2012-13 squad. They will begin preseason play on Thursday against the Orlando Magic and will host the Boardwalk Classic on Saturday against the new-look Brooklyn Nets in Atlantic City. The MLB postseason has seen its first casualties with the Texas Rangers and Atlanta Braves being ousted in the first-ever wildcard playoff rounds. This week's location athlete of the week goes to junior Pat Rooney of the golf team as his 79 on the par led the Cavs and was good enough to tie for 8th place overall at the Philadelphia University Classic on Tuesday. Keep it up, Pat. That's it for sports. Now back to Val. The first presidential debate left some voters who are already undecided even more undecided. Several Cabrini students had a chance to watch the live stream of the debate in the communications newsroom and the Wolfington Center on campus. According to some commentators on CNN, Romney came to play while Obama's performance let them down. Reportedly, some people who voted for Obama four years ago were concerned by Obama's laid-back and reserved attitude in this past week's debate. Voters leaned more towards Romney, who, according to CNN, had better debating skills. If we cut taxes, skew towards the wealthy, and roll back regulations, then uh, we'll be better off. I've got a different view. Eight different agencies. Overhead is overwhelming. We've got to get those dollars back to the states and go to the workers so they can create their own pathways to get in the training they need for jobs that will really help them. With less than a month until the presidential election, Voters are looking forward to the next three debates, one between the vice presidential candidates and two additional presidential debates. Stakes are high for the vice presidential debate. Candidates Senator Paul Ryan and current vice president Joe Biden will go head to head as their presidential candidates did in last week's debate. According to CNN, Biden will have to make up for President Obama's poor debate showing while Ryan is ready for Biden to jump back at him. The two candidates both have very different personalities, and this week's debate on October 11th will likely highlight that since their attacks on each other have escalated on the campaign trail. Here's a twist on fundraising. There are benefit car washes around Phoenix, Arizona to raise money for funerals and births, struggling churches, and even murder victims. Evidently, since the cost of the materials for a car wash is low, the need is great and the demand is constant. So benefit car washes are becoming more common for those in need. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Megan with your weekly entertainment update. Looks like Chris Bauer and Rihanna are trying to renew their friendship. There has been talk of their reunion, which was fueled last month when Rihanna gave Chris Brown a quick kiss and a hug at the MTV Video Music Awards. Brown has two more years of probation to serve his felony assault conviction against Rihanna. During the next chapter sit-down, Rihanna revealed to Oprah Winfrey that she has been trying to work on her friendship with Chris Brown. What do you think about the pair reuniting their friendship? Tweet us at LocationPR hashtag Second Chance to tell us what you think. For all you Boardwalk Empire fans out there, word is that the show will return for a fourth season. The show, which stars Steve Buscemi as Atlantic City's notorious Prohibition-era head honcho, Enoch Nucky Thompson, recently picked up four Emmy Awards and began its third season a few weeks back. There's no word yet when production will begin for the fourth season or when it would premiere. Boardwalk Empire airs every Sunday night on HBO. According to Esquire magazine, Mila Kunis has been named Sexiest Woman Alive. Of course, we're not telling Ashton anything he doesn't already know, right? The 29-year-old Ukrainian-born actress follows in the footsteps of last year's Sexiest Woman Alive, Rihanna. Naturally, it's not because of her drop-dead sexy body. 
Mila has been building her career on more than just her looks. Hunis is genuinely funny. She has no problem voicing Meg on Family Guy, a character who is constantly being told how ugly she is. And she's balanced playing girlfriends in comedies like Forgetting Sarah Marshall and the action films like Book of Eli, where she has held her own against Denzel Washington. Hunis always appears to be sexy and confident in these kinds of roles. Now that's what I call sexy. That was your entertainment update. Now back to Bethany for your trip around the world. In hopes of turning the war's tide, Saudi Arabia and Qatar have been giving money in small arms to Syrian rebels. But they've refused to give the rebels larger weapons to bring down government aircraft. According to the New York Times, the U.S. is in favor of giving these groups larger weapons, but is hesitant about giving logistical support for the rebels. A number of Saudi and Qatari officials are concerned that the fighting could cause a jihad, which could potentially be threatening to other Arab governments. In India, C.V. Gayathri was denied access to medical school. It was ordered by the Indian Supreme Court that she be admitted to medical school while she waits for a larger court review. The Supreme Court has tried to decrease the scope of caste quotas, a majoring issue, but Parliament has passed amendments to expand and protect them. In Stockholm, Sweden, British researcher John Gordon and Shinya Yamanaka from Japan won the 2012 Nobel Peace Prize in medicine. The two scientists discovered that mature, specialized cells of the body can be reprogrammed into stem cells. According to the Washington Post, quote, the discoveries of Gordon and Yamanaka have shown that specialized cells can turn back the developmental clock under certain circumstances. This has opened up a whole new door for scientists who are constantly looking to progress medicine. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Bigenhill. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.